Hey guys, thanks for joining us again. You're with uh, myself, Lauren, of the BC Board team, and we're joined by Alessio Cavatori. Um, we're going to be talking with Alessio about his thoughts and feelings uh, about the Kings of War game. Now, this is still so, so early days. This is, we're, pretty, we're pretty privileged here. This is what we as gamers never get to see. We're going to be talking about Alessio while this game is still in development. Very much. And we're going to see the, the thoughts and the processes as they stand today. So what you're seeing may not be exactly as it turns out in the beta. It will not be. <laughs> <laughs> will not be. Um, but you get, to, you get an insight into what, what is happening during the game development process. And that, that, that for us here in the Beast of War team, we, we've been finding it fascinating talking to you about this. And uh, we think you guys at home might enjoy this as well. So we're going to do a kind of a high level overview of the game and in this video we're starting off with uh, units, uh, movement and kind of the, the turn structure. So if we start out with the, the turn structure, Alessia, what was your thoughts when you're coming to a new game like this? I know you have to work very closely with the Mantic guys, so as a team, you know, with uh, what are your thoughts on turns and phases and things like that? Where, where do you want to go with that? Well, the, the most important decision regarding on how to structure the game uh, was actually out of uh, something that Ronnie said that he wanted, uh, part of his brief, part of his, what the game should be like. He said he would like the game to be playable in tournament, a tournament level. Mm -hmm. And that's a big hint for me, because obviously, uh, whether you want the game to be completely a friendly game, you can go one way. If you want it to be able to stand a competitive environment, then you have to, do a, to go a certain way. Uh, so we thought through all the possibilities as in the different kind of, you know, it's like whether it go, I move, you move, then I shoot, then you shoot, or instead if I take my turn, you take your turn. And we wondered and pondered which ones to go for, but in the end, what I was saying before, the fact that it needs to be, to be viable for tournament play, uh, meant that actually I went, okay, so what, I, what do I not like of most of games I've played in tournament? What I don't like is time wasting. I find it offensive. Yeah, uh, the the fact that some people, when they are in a position of advantage, mm -hmm. and they can see that maybe if the game continued, maybe their advantage would be lost, some some unscrupulous players may decide to apply delaying tactics, and mm -hmm. uh, will be, become basically the old game slows down, and the old game, uh, and in a way, it's very unfair the fact that some people may take ages to do uh, to do their move, and other people don't, and even if uh, even if we forget about the old tournament. Uh, area, but even when we are meeting to, uh, meet to play a game, if I'm a very slow player, just because that's the way I play, I like to think about things, etc., and you are a very quick player, then we're probably not going to enjoy it very much, because you know, you're know you going, come on, move, come on, move, and I'm kind of feeling pressurized, and go, oh, but I need to, you know, come on, come on, I need to think. So, the one thing that I thought would make it very appealing for, the, for tournament play, and for kind of making it fair in the use of time, is actually to design a game that would be able, you could actually play by using some kind of timing device, like a chess clock, for example. Mm -hmm. And that would be a very effective uh, way of actually making sure that the time is equally divided between the two players. Now, we should possibly talk about how a chess clock works. Yes, I think, I think that would be, that would be uh, useful at this stage. So, uh, a chess clock, obviously used in all the great chess tournaments. So, I can imagine in a tournament, uh, Alessio, what we might have is we allocate one hour to each player okay That's right. so the chess clock is set up for an hour for each player when you're while well, you're doing when I'm finished my turn I hit uh, the button and your hour starts ticking down and uh, when you finish your move you stop that hour and my hour restarts and then mine stops and restarts until gradually you eat up over the course of an entire game that hour now if the hour completes before the game is finished, um, you lose. That player loses the game, yes, absolutely. In, in a game of chess. So, um, it, it, do you think that that kind of thing could still work within, even within a war game as well? Well, traditionally, the answer would have been no. Because yeah. obviously, uh, in war games, there is the, the fact that actually there's an interaction between the two players, and often a player has to do things, actions, in, in, the, in the other player's turn. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is, this is like combat and taking saves and things like that, because yeah, that occurred to me when you were saying there about um, using a chess clock. I was thinking, thinking 
well, a good cheesy player would still be able to cause delays by just you know taking his time with taking saves and absolutely, absolutely. in his turns of combat. So how do you, how do you get over that? Well, the the simple solution would be to have a game where actually uh, in my turn I act, in your turn you act. There is no crossing of action action time during during the turn, and actually that's fairly after thinking about it, it's very simply achieved by a system where. I will go through the turn, so let's say I start to move, it's my turn, mm -hmm. I will do a movement, I yep. move my units, then I fire any weapons, I do any shooting that I want, and obviously when I hit your models and wound your models, damage your, damage your models, then, or I should say units, <laughs> <laughs> damage your units, uh, it, there is no save involved, it's just I'm rolling against your defense value, and for every damage I can cause, I can place a counter on you or whatever, inflict a point of damage on that unit, mm -hmm. whether you want to represent it in different ways, we'll talk about that later. But, and then I will try to, if any unit suffers a lot of damage, I will try to break the morale of that unit by actually rolling against its morale, mm -hmm. which is modified by the, number, the amount of damage I've made. Yeah. And after that, I will move any unit that actually have charged one of your units during the movement will hit. Well, do effectively exactly the same that you would be doing in the shooting phase. It's just this will happen up close. Your, my models will attack, strike your models, pile damage onto them, and possibly make them run away. Mm -hmm. And if they run away, the unit would just be removed, which kind of removes also the problem of dealing with fleeing units, etc. If the yes. unit flees, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Very simple. But the obviously the. And that means that in my turn, I act, I'll do roll, move, shoot, pile damage, break your morale, hit you, roll, roll for damage. That's all I do. Then I can stop the clock, and it's your turn. And you will do exactly the same to me. So the player's entire turn sequence is completely self-contained. It's in my time. It's not in your time. It's not in our time. It's in my time. I'm allocated an hour. Um, whatever I do in that turn, I do all the rolling. And um, you know it, it, it's just worked out, or it's not, but it, it's all in my time. That's correct. The uh, the one thing that actually felt strange, I have to admit, when I was doing this, is obviously is combat more than anything else, mm -hmm. because obviously we are used to systems where actually both models fight and you feel yeah. like you have a feeling where actually that's a more close simulation of reality where you go but well, surely some of my guys will be falling and some of your guys will be falling there will be mm -hmm. a and of course this system uh, doesn't represent that as literally mm -hmm. what happens here is because my units will fight yours you will take some damage fall back or push me back yeah. and then the combat will always break at the end mm -hmm. whether with, with your unit destroyed or not if your unit holds the ground holds the ground then they stay over to you, then you would charge in and start inflicting damage on my unit. So it, literally, it, you can see it in your mind's eye as my unit has charged in, so most of the hacking and slashing comes from my guys barging against yours. Mm -hmm. But then, and you guys are kind of defending, they both kind, parry, of kind of regroup. But they kind of regroup and they push back in. in. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. almost like that kind of feeling. And so it's acceptable, I think. I don't think it's too much of an abstraction. I think mm -hmm. it's fairly all right as a, as a level of the definition of uh, simulation. Uh, and the, the overall achievement is that, yes, we have that cleanness of I'll do stuff in my turn, you do stuff in your turn, we can play with a chess clock, which, mm -hmm. you know, would make fairness of time. The, the other interesting thing about using a chess clock, now we will cover uh, combat in a later video, so we might get into a bit more detail on that, but one of the interesting things about a chess clock, and we've been doing some, some plays of some other games recently with a chess clock that we'll be covering a bit later, um, the chess clock really does add another layer of Oh my God! <laughs> we've got to keep. We've got to keep moving. You know, it gives a real sense of uh, of urgency. Time is running out, and I think that that's something that you don't often get in a war game. Is that sense of urgency that that, that something that if you're not quick, that if you're not aggressive, you know, and you just lull around, you could lose. Absolutely, and actually, uh, for me, is the it, it's the fact that. I can, uh, different from what people think, some people think that actually a chess club would just measure how much time you have for a, for a turn, which is not the case, like you explained, is the, turn, is the time for the entire game. Yeah. So you're in control, you're mm -hmm. in control of your own time. If you want to take your time to think about what you're doing, so maybe avoid making silly moves and mm -hmm. take time thinking, you can do that, mm -hmm. but obviously your time is being eaten. So yeah. you, you have to, but you know, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. You're not exploiting other people's time, you're not doing delaying tactics, you're not kind of breaking that in that way. Well, it sounds great for tournament play because you know, the, the time delay thing in tournament, the tournaments is a real pain in the butt. 
Um, you know, with the chess clock, if you each get an hour, there's a two hour war game, you know. And if you, you know, as you say, if you want to take your time at the start, you're just getting warmed up, you want to just take it a bit slowly, that's fine. But you'll have to have quicker turns towards the end. Whereas if you have quick turns at the start, you might have a bit more time to spend in the end game in trying to work out what it is you're trying to do. Or you could just try and keep it, you know, steady the whole way through. It's, it's certainly a very interesting addition to tournament play. And one, I must admit, that I would like to use even in our own beer and pretzel games. You can, and indeed, I mean, there's other advantages. The, the advantage that, for example, if something happens that uh, would actually is not really fair to, for my time to be consumed, say some models fall or mm -hmm. or there's uh, somebody needs to check something or a phone rings, then you can always freeze the time. Yes, time freeze, stop, do the things you need to do, check the rule, whatever, do whatever you need to do, and mm -hmm. then start again. So that that's flexible as well. And your and your beer and pretzels games anyway. That that. As the great advantage that you can actually say, how long are we going to play? Are we going to play for? Straight yeah, away. Yeah. Go, yeah. We play three it, hours, eh? an hour and a half each. Yeah. Go. And it's perfect. Like you know, on a night where you, you maybe have a few hours to spend, you could say, well, let's set it to two hours each. We know we're going to get two games in. You know, That's rather right. than it rather than it run on and on and on. It's very easy to plan tournaments and events in general. How many games mm. do we play today? Well, one game. Hey, you can actually set it very. Closely, yeah. and you know it will work. There will be no running mm -hmm. over and stuff like that. Now I'm sure there's still bits and pieces uh, to be worked out there, guys. Remember, this is still very early days, so caveats do apply. We're talking about time clocks now. By the time the beta comes around, we may not. <laughs> you, you never know. Um, one of the things that you mentioned there was um, you had corrected yourself on models and units. Now that's that's very important in this game, and and now is a, a good chance to get a, a a good look at the thoughts currently in Kings of War on units versus models. So can you take us through that? Absolutely. Uh, it was one of the first things I asked Ronnie, whether he wanted a system which was more based on single models, mm -hmm. or if he wanted a, a system which was based on entire units. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to both, of course. So it's a matter of choice. And uh, eventually, because of, again, we're trying to make it fast and simple, fast playing, easy, simple to, to, to learn, but then obviously an interesting game, what we thought is to go for actual unit unit-based mm -hmm. game, not a model-based game. What that means is that simply, uh, instead of having the profile and stat, stats of abilities for a single guy, what mm -hmm. you have is the profile and the abilities of, of a unit. Yep. So, in this case, a unit of skeletons in a, or a unit of elves, or health cavalry, or even a monster, or a... So, uh, or war machine, or a hero. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all of the, you know, all yeah. the troop types we have. Uh, so basically, I started with uh, the core, the, the core unit, the standard unit of mm -hmm. the game, which is this. Mm -hmm. 20 models. 20 models on a 5 frontage by 4 deep. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's your unit. That's and that's called a regiment. A regiment. Yeah, it basically follows the naming of the Mantic Ranger products, as yeah. you would buy them from the shelf. Effectively. Which, if I can say at this point, I, I really like. I really like this, because... Um, with other war games, even 40k and fantasy, sometimes when you buy a box set, it's an odd number of models. It doesn't make up, you know, a complete unit, and you have to buy others. With, with what you're planning here, you know, this small unit is a troop, which it's equates to troop. a troop box. That's a regiment, which equates to the regiment box, and the big one is called a war host, which equates basically to a war host box. So I know when I'm buying a box, I'm getting a unit. You know, it's not it's not half a unit or whatever. I'm basically getting either a trooper or a regiment that I can field. But there is also flexibility with that. I mean, you're right, it's simple. But on the other hand, you can decide that you can field these 20 guys as two troops. I split mm -hmm. them into two units. This war host could be two standard units or it could be four mm -hmm. uh, troop level units. So there is flexibility and you can put them together, two of these. So effectively, the smallest unit is the 10 men. Yep. And that's the kind of the, the unit, mm -hmm. the smallest possible. And everything else is like a multiple of that. So yeah. 10, 20, 40. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, of course, this is the core of the game. This is the center of the game. In the future, of course, we may do expansions that deal with smaller skirmish level mm -hmm. you know, game effectively. We will possibly do larger games, which have larger units. With, and again, it's simple, very flexible, because actually you can just need you just need a different stat line. Yeah. Just to find, how big is this unit? It's 80 guys has this stat line. Awesome. Mm -hmm. thing and you can scale it up very easily and I think people will be able to scale it up themselves if they feel so even before we give the, the official rules yeah um, which suits 
kings of war are great because you know the whole mantra that's come from mantic from day one is build big armies so, you know their their pricing their their whole approach even to model design to make it quick and easy to build the models has been to allow you to build big armies so you know it's nice to see that during the game design that you guys are obviously living up to that mantra i'm trying to build a game that will scale up you know to to, to potentially you know, really big armies that are facing off and kicking the crap out of each other and hopefully without adding much complexity because as i say it just well that unit has a stat line which mm -hmm. is awesome compared to that <laughs> particularly compared to that but bigger unit we'll just need a bigger a higher number stat, stat mm -hmm. line um, so the other thing then uh, that obviously occurs to us, and we've been chatting about this in the Beast of War studio for a while now, is that it, if it's based on a unit uh, level, you know, if you have a kind of an army list in mind that you that you like or that you're content with, you could effectively just model these up even as dioramas. You could, yeah. Um, so you could, um, you know, if money's tight and you know we're in a recession, there's no reason why you couldn't buy a regiment box and maybe split it in half and model it up as two dioramas. Um, we'll see what Mantic have to say about that, but you know it is a recession, guys. <laughs> so there's scope for all kinds of modeling and whatnot. But this is mostly down to the fact of the way you're handling casualties, though, currently. So can, can you talk us through a little bit of that? Well, as I said before, you don't actually remove models, so you mm -hmm. only will keep that shape. And what you do is you pile damage on it by using counters. Mm -hmm. uh, whether is counters, I mean, the Mantic range has actually figures of casualties and stuff, which obviously will be looking very good, and in any way it would be easier to convert and make your yeah. own models with uh, make your casualty models. Uh, alternatively, of course, you can use a dice, you can use tokens, you can use all sorts of different ways of mar marking damage on a unit. And the more damage the unit takes, the more likely it will be to actually dissolve and run away if it fails mm -hmm. a, effectively what is a well, I called it a nerve test, just because I, I like the idea of testing nerves. Uh, I'm not very, very overly serious in the way I'm writing these rules, because again, yeah, not, I think it's important not to take oneself too seriously when playing war games. You're still pushing toy soldiers around the table. True. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so basically is the, uh, that the, the damage that they suffer is a measure of how likely they have to run away. And at some stage they will, the more damage they have on them, the more at some stage they will inevitably just run away. Which and is it, which is a very similar mechanic to um, black powder, absolutely, for example. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know we, we did a we had a first look at the black powder rulebook and loved that as well. Loved the concept of it. And uh, I cannot wait to play Kings of War and have a big bag of dead guys. <laughs> the, just uh, as units get hit, just streams of dead guys lying behind it. And I just think that that's great. So we'll have to we'll have to wait and see, but hopefully Mantic have it on the cards to to create sprues of dead guys. Because I just want I just want loads of them strewn over the battlefield. <laughs> Bring out your dead. <laughs> so um that's uh, that's the the basics of of units. So you you have your three basic unit types: troop, regiment, war host, and then you also have your your cavalry, war machines, dragons, and monsters, yeah. and then and then heroes. How about movement, Alicia? What, what's your current thoughts on movement and moving these regiments around? Where, where are you guys currently at on that? What do you think? Again, has to be something that has be you have to be able to do very quickly and very simply yeah just something straightforward so i went for a very radical i think very simple system uh i'll show you for example mm -hmm. with that 20 20 model strong uh, regiment uh, so the idea would be that when it's my turn in my turn i will point at my unit and give them an order uh, this is not a command and control game it's, mm -hmm. you have complete control but i like the i think the rep it's cute to represent the idea that the leader of the unit the champion is kind of going do this, do that, and there is no chance of them not doing it, but yeah. in this case, it, it, it's kind of just the way you represent it. So, the order that the unit can receive is to stand, hold the ground, hold your ground, which obviously means you're just not moving it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, obviously, it would mean that I get better at shooting, possibly, I don't know, something we have to look at it if you hold your ground, not move. But anyway, that's the basic default thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the other order you can give them is to move. Mm -hmm. uh, and movement, uh, they have all the speed. Every unit has a different value of speed, effectively how fast they can move. And for example, uh, this has not been decided yet. Mm -hmm. But as, let's say off the top of my head, 10 centimeters forward. So mm -hmm. if I order them to advance, they will go straight forward 10 centimeters. Straight, straight forward. in the direction they're facing. Absolutely. That's the easy, classic, but it is the easiest thing you can do, just advance mm -hmm. forward. 
The other thing they could do when you order them to just simply move would be a sideways movement, so a shuffle <laughs> sideways, mm -hmm. or even a backward movement mm -hmm. of a fraction of that speed. Obviously, yeah. it w possibly half, possibly a quarter, that still is to be decided, but basically it would be slower than just advancing, because really that's the most natural thing to do for a unit is to go forward. Yeah. Uh, so that's the order of moving. Mm -hmm. The next order you could give them is a double, run. Advance as fast as possible. So what happens is they would move at double that speed, but only forward. There is no sideways movement or anything. Just straight forward, double, double the speed. The other order you could give them is about face, turn. You know, change, po change, for, change formation, position in this case. And uh, that's simply done by pivoting. Around pivoting the around the center point. Around the center of the unit, you just pivot around to face a different direction. And that's mm -hmm. all you do. So that will give you a new facing and will give you the chance of really go and face differently somewhere else where you want to go. So there's only one other order that you can give to a unit, which obviously is possibly the funkiest order, the most exciting one, which is charge. And that's done in a separate thing. And there's actually a slightly bigger part of the rules that will explain how to do that. But again, it's fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, sim to, to, to say it clearly is measure the distance from the units to the target. Yeah, you're within range, double the range of the movement, fine. Uh, is there enough space for the unit to fit, physically move through, as in there's nothing that would block it getting there? If those two conditions are there and you can see the target, then you're in. Just move it in. Thump. Thump. As mm -hmm. simple as that. So, without worrying exactly what, how, how it happens. So that's the, the orders you can give to, to the unit. Um, obviously, some units, it would feel, that, that's kind of appropriate for a regiment of infantry. Which you yeah. can imagine moving kind of ponderously and slowly around. Mm -hmm. Other units will need to get faster than that. Yeah. So a cavalry unit, is more cavalry, light cavalry, flyers, things like this, will need a bit more maneuverability. And that, I think, would be as simple as infantry can move or pivot, basically. Move or pivot. Yeah, move. Yeah. You can order them to, to move forward, like mm -hmm. straight, or you can pivot them around. Things like cavalry can actually do both in the same move. They can yeah. pivot and move, or move, move pivot, move and or, pivot, or a combination of those. Well, that's actually detail and playtesting mm -hmm. will, will tell how to get there. But the idea is we'll get a bit more flexible, a bit more maneuverable, mm -hmm. obviously. That's it. That's it. Movement. Done. As, as clean cut as that. <laughs> so, um, that's the movement covered, guys. That's uh, just a little bit of insight into um, the turn sequence, what their thoughts were on tournament play. Um, looking at the actual unit creation itself, so they're, they're opting currently for units over models, and a little bit on movement. So far, it all seems very, very simple and straightforward to me, Alessio. You know, it's um, I results. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, you know, in the the course of just even making this video, I, I feel like I, you know, I understand the basics of how this game works already. So, guys. Put your comments below. Come on over to www.beastsofwar.com uh, where we have a load of Mantic stuff going on this weekend. And if you're watching this video and the weekend's over, well, come on over anyway because we'll still have a load of uh, Mantic and Kings of War stuff going on. Thanks for watching the video. Get your comments below either on the YouTube channel uh, or over on beastsofwar.com. And we will see you in the next video where we're going to have a little bit of a look at shooting and combat.